Up and Rovers return to action this coming week, taking on Bristol Bloody City. But which Bristol City will show up? The good, the bad or the ugly? Well, today we're going to have a find out. <laughs> That's right, folks, back once again with another video. Today is all about Rovers rivals, and it's going to be Bristol City in the hot seat. We've got a Bristol, we've got a Robins fan standing by, and we'll get to him in a second. If you knew where you've been, smash your subscribe and you want to stop shop for Championship Football, Blapping Rovers, World Football. We've got it all here under one Ruski. That's right, Rovers unbeaten so far this season, but can that unbeaten run stretch another game uh, as we welcome Bristol City to Ewood Park? Well, a lot to be talked about, and we'll get to that in a second. Big, big shout out to the VIPs. They are the patrons you know who you are and again if you're new check out the links down below but let's talk about bristol bloody city joining me today is annie a bristol city fan uh so for my small corner of the youtube universe tell us where you come from and why on earth you support bristol city why do i support bristol city that is a question i'm asking myself every day <laughs> um no i just you know local team why not love football might as well get into it um yeah that's what's but there, there, there's two local teams then in your neck of the woods. So why this one? <laughs> uh, well, actually, this is the first team I kind of heard about. So uh, that's if I went to Ashton Gate first. Uh, actually, never been to the Memorial. So um, that's why I support. So I support City, and um, I have a, I have a, I have a Rovers mate who didn't actually make it very appealing for me. Uh, <laughs> so I thought, well, uh, City it is. Do, do you miss the? I can't remember the last time they were in the same league. Do you miss? Was that in your era? Did they? Did they ever duke it out while you were a fan? Uh, no, uh, twenty fourteen, I think. Last time we played each other and we beat them. Um, so yeah, it's been a it's been a while. I think it's. Uh, I think it may be getting closer though. Um, so yeah, uh, just uh, one of those rivalries where we m the moment we play each other next, it will be. Massively, yeah, very, yeah. very, very, very. Yeah, it was, it's the same with us with Burnley. You know, we, we've had a few years apart, and then when it gets together, it's there. You know, form and everything goes out the window. Uh, speaking of form, a uh, decent start to the season for Bristol City. You know, uh, four points from a possible twelve. Are you happy with that points return, or do you think you you missed a trick in one of those opening games? Uh, it was it was a good start, I'd say, for the first three games because. We played really well in those three games, and we played some. We played Coventry, who were a really good side, uh, and we nullified them really for a lot of it. Uh, beat Millwall when we should have scored more, uh, to be honest, and shouldn't have conceded the three goals in, in that game. Uh, and Hull, we were the better type. Where were the, we were the better side by by a country mile, and we really, really dominated that game, and we should have won it. And it was just a it was a silly mistake at the end. And, a bit of kind of early season uh, rustiness let, less, let us down there. Um, it was good for that. And then you're going into the last game of the international break, you're going, right, newly promoted team away from home. Can we get a second one of the season? Can we go into the international break and eight points, I think, would have been from four games and just just firm it up a little bit? No. Uh, <laughs> go, and, go and get absolutely pulverised at Pride Park. Uh, in, a, in a display where I thought, I was coming away from it going, we weren't unlucky. We were just absolutely battered. And it, honestly, honestly, could have been a hell of a lot more than three for Derby. We we did not get going uh, after fifth, after 15 minutes. We should have scored first the first 20, 15 minutes. But after that, they just ran all over us and set pieces. Um, I know you've played Derby this season, haven't you? They look really good on set pieces. And we couldn't deal with their physicality at all. So... Really disappointing way to end the end and the first block of games, and especially when you go into the first international break in particular uh, on the back of a defeat, it's just really annoying. And we just, yeah, a really poor way to let us down after after first good three games. Yeah, so you, yeah, you, I'm trying to think from your point. Like for us, it was a, it was a good time to have the international break going in on a, on a bit of a high. Um, uh, did you think, you know, yeah, I guess I guess it would have been a. Uh, a bad way to end that first block. But, uh, you know, life under Manning, now he's here, what, his second, what, season and a half, maybe. What would you see at the end of the season, a sackable offence from Liam Manning? Where would you, where would you, what would be unacceptable in your eyes at the end of the season? Unacceptable would probably be a relegation battle. Um, we're, look, we're one of those clubs where you can't expect 
big things in the championship. We don't have that sort of money or resources behind us, like a lot of clubs do in this league. Uh, we're probably better off than a lot of clubs, but we're not as, you know, if you look at teams above us are challenging to get into the playoffs, like a Coventry I've just mentioned, a Middlesbrough. Uh, we don't have that sort of money behind us. Um, a sackable offence. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to think about this, but probably a relegation battle. If we're any, anywhere near that, that sort of region of the table, he'll, he, he will be gone. And uh, it's, a, it's a good question among the fan base, actually, because the reason Nigel Pearson got sacked last season was... Uh, he, the uh, clearly the hierarchy at Bristol City thought he was underperforming with that squad. Um, I would argue Liam Manning has got a hell of a better squad uh, than Nigel Pearson ever did. Uh, so I think it's about for him. It's about progress and really looking. Maybe not this season, but definitely next season, looking like a side that's going to be really pushing in in the championship um, and really looking like you know, a really good side for, for for a couple of years to come and just the long term. Sustainability, really, I think that would be the most important thing for Manning. But a sackable offence would be a relegation battle. So that would hopefully touch wood not to come. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't think that that will happen. I think you know Bristol City are uh, they, they 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 did some good business in, in the summer. I'm a big fan of Sinclair Armstrong. I think you got a, a steal there, Scott Twine. You know, I think this is his level. Yeah, you know, he went to Burnley and didn't really get a good good crack of the whip. But losing Tommy Conway, are you, are you happy with the overall business for Bristol City this uh, the summer? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a net gain, honestly. Uh, I think we've massively improved on the squad. Uh, and yeah, losing Tommy Conway, a bit of a blow. But I think if you're a Bristol, if, you, if you're an outsider looking in at the stats and you're going, 11 goals, you don't want to lose that in a side that didn't score many goals last season anyway. Uh, but he didn't really look too threatening from open play. And it never really felt like he fit into, fit into Liam Manning's system. And a lot of goals he scored were penalties. Um, I think it was probably a good move for him to go to to Middlesbrough, I'm sure he would have been hoping for a better one, but uh, here we are. Uh, I think we've improved on that striking option, despite him leaving with Sinclair Armstrong, you've mentioned who I've really liked the look of so far, uh, and Fali Mayula, who's come in as well. Uh, and yeah, we've just improved on a lot of different positions. I think if you were to ask any optimistic City fan, if you if this was Football Manager, for example, and he had said, right, we need cover in every single position, I think Liam Manning has got got that and I think in recent years Pearson wouldn't have Pearson wouldn't have got that um, so he has been heavily backed Liam Manning with a lot of money behind him as well I think we spent over 10 million pounds this summer which is quite a lot for our standards um, so it's I think him he's been fully backed and I think <laughs> when you spend about two and a half million well, I'm not sure what it was but it was about that for a defender a centre-back who's not guaranteed a start in this city mm. team it shows that real ambition. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy with the business we've we've done so far, and really excited about it as well. Speaking of excited, good segue there. Who should we be worried about for the match on Saturday when your lot come to our place? That's a good question. Uh, I'd probably say Max Bird. To be honest, if he's if Max Bird is at it, that is uh, Max Bird. In the first three games was at it. Uh, Funnily enough, away at Derby, his old club, he wasn't quite at it. But if he's kind of refreshed a little bit and kind of, you know, better suited, just gets to know the system a little bit better since arriving uh, in the summer, he will he can single-handedly take teams apart, is what I seriously think. His passing is on another level. Um, he can uh, pick out balls that no one can see on the pitch, really. Um, I, I've seen him kind of... I've seen him... Th three times in the flesh so far on a City shirt and uh, for a midfielder his his kind of composure and his just overall ability to pick out some like, top-notch passes is, is brilliant uh, another one is Sinclair Armstrong uh, who can who can destroy teams with his pace and with his kind of strength and his power uh, maybe not the most clinical uh, at times and that is a bit of a criticism from QPR fans and so far here as well a little bit but he can single-handedly take teams apart if he's at it with his pace and, and with his strength. So, yeah, those are probably the two players I'd, I'd be looking out for if I was a Blackburn fan. And even though I, even though in recent years it would be two players, and if you stop them, we probably lose the game. We've got options now, um, and that is that is the main thing. So even if you look at the bench, we've got op we've got players who can come on and impact games, which is massively important. And I think we're probably a better rounded side than ever. 
All right. Now, if you turn the tables on you, who are you worried about on the blue and white half uh, coming at you this coming weekend? Uh, I'd probably say Mac Dargay, uh, mm -hmm. because of his kind of look. From what I've seen of him, anyway, he's quite quick, and his pace is is, is a bit of an issue for, for 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 us. And that was shown at Pride Park, uh, where we just got uh, outpaced, really. And if it, if it's Cal Naismith is starting at centre back, and I love Cal Naismith, I've no problems with him. <laughs> but he is a little bit on the slower side, and if he if he if you catch him for pace, he will he will struggle, and he is a bit of a confidence player as well. Um, so yeah, any pace you have will be. We'll, we'll struggle. We'll, we'll struggle massively. Uh, that's why I would have said Ryan Hedges, but I know he's not going to be available, is he? So, um, so, so I think, yeah, if, if you have any pace on the wing in particular and up top, uh, well, I'd be worried about that. Well, so good news, bad news. Uh, so, Mac DeGay is actually suspended. He got a red card against Burnley, so he won't be there. But oh, we, do have, we do have a we do have an Austrian player you might know, you know, Mr. Wyman. Hey. He's got an absolute banger against Burnley. So uh, maybe he's got a score to settle with you. Are you happy to see him? Uh, are you have fond memories of Mr. Wyman? Oh, I, I love Andy Wyman. I'm, he's, he's, he's great. He's been a, he was a great player for us. Um, he, left in a, he left in a good way as well. It wasn't one of those kind of bad blood departures. We, I think we all knew it was kind of time for him to, time for him to leave and kind of ran his natural cycle a little bit at, at British City. Uh, he provided... One remarkable season where he scored twenty something goals for us, and if you look at the fact that we finished seventeenth that season mm. without him, um, yeah, we would have been in a world of trouble. So, love Andy Vine, uh, cult hero, uh, really in, in many ways, and I'm sure you know this, but runs all day, just doesn't doesn't stop pressing, doesn't stop working for the team, even at, even if it's at his own kind of uh, hindrance. A team player and uh, yeah that goal at Burnley I, I I looked at it I was on the bus to Derby actually I looked at it and I went not not surprised it's, it's Andy <laughs> Fyman is what he does uh he's, he's a top quality player he's still got a hell of a lot of quality um his performances here the last 18 months kind of dipped a little bit but we we always knew if you if you give Andy Fyman a chance in the box he is going to score uh he is going to take it more times uh than not and I'm sure uh, I think all of our, the whole of our defence has played with Andy Vine. Uh so I think we, I think we know that we shouldn't be giving him any, any space uh, in around the box because he is uh, deadly at championship level. Um, but yeah, I no, no bad words to say about him. A genuinely lovely guy and really good player for us. So no problems with him at all. Yeah, we're currently building a statue for him for that wonder goal against them <laughs> six fingered weirdos down the road. Okay, so let's, let's go focus in on the game. Uh, if you were given the keys to, uh, I call it Thrashton Gate, because uh, we got spanked by you many, many times at your place. Or even, was it 5 0 last time? Uh, was that at your place? Uh, yeah. what, who, who would be in your start 11 for this coming weekend? You know, um, what's available to you? Uh, so my personal starting eleven, it would be a back four with obviously Max O'Leary in goal. Uh, it would be a back four of George Tanner, Zach Viner. Uh, I know Cal Naismith started against Derby, but I'd drop him and I'd play Luke McNally as centre-back, the new signing from Burnley. Uh, I'd play Campering in midfield. On a personal level, I would drop Joe Williams. I'd put Max Bird and Jason Knight in the double pivot uh, in, the, in, the, in a 4-2-3-1. I'd put Scott Twine in the number ten position, I think he's deadly in that in that in that region. Instead of playing out wide on the left hand side, and then that, and then him kind of tucking into the more central position, and that affecting campering, it's just a kind of mess when he plays on the left side. So play him in the ten. Uh, play Addis Mimetti on the left hand side. If Yu Hirakawa is fit, I'd play Yu Hirakawa because he looks really good, really exciting uh, Japanese talent. Um, so I play him on the right hand side and up top. Um, I'd start seeing Claire Armstrong, but I wouldn't be too too unhappy if Fali Mayulu started because then that would mean a kind of tired defence, a little little bit of a tired defence, and then you can bring on six Sinclair Armstrong on sixty minutes and just <clears throat> tell him to run run at them and ex expose them a little bit. So I think I'd probably go Sinclair Armstrong, but but yeah, I think that would be my preferred starting eleven on on, on Saturday. It does sound like you got some options there, so. Uh... 
Um, so I, I was actually a bit more confident before I spoke to you. Now I'm a little less. Cause you've done your job. You've done your job well. You've got me thinking. Oh gosh. Uh, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna mix it up here a bit. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play my little game. It's cool. What's not my game? I've, I kind of stole it from you know, TikTok. So we're gonna chuck names at you. They have all played for Blackburn Rovers and Bristol City. Some may have, you know, as you say, might be a little bit old, but just go with your gut. They they are pretty familiar. There's a couple dodgy ones here that you might not know of, but just go with your instinct. Are you ready? We're going to start the clock now. We're going to start with Greg Cunningham and Alan Miller, goalkeeper. Greg Cunningham. Greg Cunningham. Greg Cunningham, Elliot Bennett. Greg Cunningham. Greg Cunningham, Jason Roberts. Go on, leave over. Greg Cunningham. Greg Cunningham, Casey Palmer. <laughs> uh, let's go Casey Palmer, why not? Casey Palmer, Andy Cole. Andy Cole. Andy Cole, Ben Gladwin. Andy Cole. Andy Cole, Andreas Wyman. Uh, for my own memories, Wyman. Wyman, Sammy Smodich. Wyman. <laughs> Wyman, John Stead. Again, personally, Wyman. Uh, let's skip forward to Derek Williams and Wyman. Uh, Wyman. Wyman, Todd Kane. Wyman. Wyman, Danny Simpson. Wyman. <laughs> Uh, we got remember one more. What, uh, Wyman, Bradley, or Wyman. Yeah, we'll we'll leave it on that. Yeah, yeah. Good winner in the end. We got. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with your choice. Okay, so let's move back to the game. Of course, well, where do you think Bristol City are going to end up at the end of the season? What's your gut? Um, I said eighth at the start of the season for for us. I think that was probably about right. Uh, I think we've well, we have definitely kind of climbed. Uh, in recent in recent years, become a better better team and uh, progressively climbed up the league positions and the championship table. Uh, last season finished eleventh. I thought with a better squad, with slightly more, you know, I think probably a manager more suited to this to this to this kind of modern era uh, up against other championship championship teams, uh, we'd be a better side. Uh, and honestly, I'm not too. I don't think I'll be too far. I'll be too far away from that at the end of the season. Um, obviously, there are a lot, a few teams that have started on, started really well uh, this, this this season. Uh, but yeah, I think overall, I think I think around eighth, maybe ninth, maybe tenth, around that, around that, around that region would will probably be fair for us come the end of the season. We have that level of quality kind of littered throughout the squad. Yeah. Uh, sidebar here. Do you believe in the Sunderland hype? Everyone's going on about Sunderland and they all that. Uh. I mean, look. I, th I think they've got some really good players in there. They've got some really good young players in there, haven't they? Uh, who who are going to get better? Uh, they're not going to win every game. They're not going to win every game by absolutely demolishing oppositions that they have been doing as well. Uh, because it's a young group, they might go through a little bit of a little bit of a kind of trough. But honestly, I think they're probably a playoff contender, kind of in in that same bracket as probably for City in, in a lot of ways. So uh, they're probably better than I expected them to be. And I'm, I'm, honestly, I expected their manager to be a little bit worse and take a little bit of time mm. to kind of get get used to the championship. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty really impressed by them. So far, I don't know what you think, but I think I think mm, I don't know. I you know I was I wasn't thinking they were going to be up there, and I and I and I hope I hope they come crashing down a little bit because you know I can't now not, not happy with that. Yeah, and, and and they lost Chuck Clark, so that's a big loss. Are they you know are they going to miss that creativity out wide? Um, but right now, yeah, it's it's because everyone seems to like. I just did a prediction video, and I haven't been seventh. Um, and, I, and I'm getting a lot of flack for it. Like, why? Wow. But anyway, and forget about that. School prediction Saturday. What's it going to be? Um, well, John Eustace is going to make it nice and tight, and that's going to annoy me because we can't break down uh, low blocks. Um, I'll go one-one. I think. I think. I think it might be one of those. It might be one of those games where we just kind of. It might be one-one in the, like the seventy-fifth minute, and both managers go right. Don't concede. To just. I think well, I think I take a point at Ewood most 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 seasons. So uh, yeah, I'll go I'll go one one. Hopefully, well, Andrew Lyman doesn't score. <laughs> well, he might. He might. Uh, again, we have we have a vacancy up top because uh, Mactigate is suspended. I appreciate it. Where can we find you? Where can people find you? 
Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Annie Harish. Um, uh, yeah, just general British City nonsense, really. A uh, lot of uh, <laughs> match previews, match reviews, uh, get to as many games as I can, and uh, just stuff like that, really. No, not nothing, nothing too groundbreaking or anything. Just, just hopefully a nice, consistent channel for your uh, Bristol City insight. Um, we're not really a we're we're a club that's uh, been famed recently, anyway, as boring. Um, so by certain YouTubers, uh, not naming names, uh, but yeah, um, just, just general Bristol stuff, you know. Well, there you have it folks. There you bloody have it. I do appreciate once again, uh, our guests for stopping by, make sure you check out his, uh, YouTube in the description. I might even chuck in his Twitter handle as well. So make sure you get involved with that and give him some love in that way. And hopefully Bristol City have a good season after this coming Saturday where Rovers will hope to entertain us all with a big win. Well, we'll see about that and we'll see who gets closer with the score prediction. But that is it. Subscribe, smash the like. Until then, we are done.